Okay, so second day, um, we finally got the pastry, and it's gonna be, and it's gonna be your snack for today. I don't know if you can see it. You will see probably after a couple of pictures. And um, what do you say about Monta? Monta, have you have, have you, did you have any particular feelings about it? I like the mine. You like the mine? Okay, we haven't seen the mine, didn't we? The museum. Yeah. Mm, that was nice with the train. Yes, that was nice yesterday. And um, it's interesting. It's a different feeling. Like I, I've been in um, Kadina and I've been over here the last days. And Monta, I can see that it looks like an older town than Kadina. And um, nice buildings. You can see the center of the city, which was. You can see a lot of. Uh, old doors, old um, walls, which is something that makes me excited as European. I like when I see that thing, so it reminds me back home. Yeah, it's a, it's a good good vibe and also there is a Monta Bay. Uh, well, today what we're going to do, uh, we are going to visit uh, us first winery and then the, we will stop to uh, a permaculture household. And uh, then uh, we will uh, go to visit an um, um, oyster farm. We are not going to go on the sea straight away. We are going to, uh, to the shed where they have oysters, where they do the, all the process. And then uh, we are going uh, to the inner uh, national park. Ready? No? Yeah, we are ready. Okay, enjoy it! <laughs> destination is on the left. We know that. Alright, so this is our 2019 Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. So it is kept in a vat. Mm -hmm. The Bionia is a heavier variety, so you get more of a nice mouthfeel to it. It is very different over here to other regions. Yes. It doesn't have that very oily flavour like most. So this one, so there are sparkling rosé and our sparkling Shiraz are traditional champagne. So they're fermented in the bottle and disgorged by hand, but the sparkling Viognier is not traditional and it's fermented in the vat rather than the bottle. Is there, do you have another glass of Because there is a sort of uh, really fruity, like a kind of strawberry of flavour that looks like, smells like... Uh, and today we are with Mr. Schulz, Laurel Schulz. Schulz, that's interesting for me. As Italian, I'm oh, still yes. practicing a little bit. A bit more German. The family, my father started here when he's 25 in the mid uh, 1950s. He, this business we took on about 12 years ago mm -hmm. from a previous owner who started the business. And uh, how, how many acres? Do you have in vines? Right, there? we've got 25 acres of vines. Okay. Well, the cellar, the cellar door is, is one of the main regions, uh, reasons that it's surviving. We do not sell our wine through any distributors. Mm -hmm. It's all through cellar door and online sales. Mm -hmm. um, this last weekend, just as it being a long weekend in October, Definitely. We, we're just short of 500 people for the Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. Definitely. So yeah, it's all, all about good. tourism. So we've got about 25 different lines coming off of uh, four varieties of grapes. Oh, wow. And we go right through from verjuice to fortifieds. Perfect. Even the kids get looked after here. They get their hot chocolates or their ice blocks or their verjuice. So, uh, what, what do you think? Did you, what did you like the most? Tell me. Come over here. <laughs> Say hi to everyone because they're, they're seeing us. You can see that. Like, hi. Yeah, what did you find cool over here? I've seen something. You've been playing over there. 
We've yes. got some games. Yeah, we've got yeah, some games. We've got colouring in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we might have more of those as time passes. I've got 500. You've got 500? Oh, wow. 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 You could win something. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. For uh, your time and for sharing uh, what you've been doing so far. <laughs> Yeah, they were basketball rain. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Perfect. Hello everyone. Welcome back on the Ag Adventures channel. And today we are here with Wendy. Wendy, sorry, what's your name again? Rushbrook. Rushbrook. And today we will speak with Wendy about his, uh, sorry, her uh, business project in uh, uh, permaculture training and also accommodation. And um, so you said a second ago, uh, no, not a second ago, um, about the fact that uh, the, this household has been building, has been built to be living in it. So mm -hmm. that is not, like the choice was a personal choice, was not a business choice. A personal choice mm -hmm. to uh, work with permaculture, it was a, a, a personal choice. Why? Why have you, uh, you applied this to, to your life? I think it comes back again to being young and being with my dad and you know five, six, seven years old, walking from one little beach town to another on the York Peninsula mm -hmm. with a, a hessian sack and picking up rubbish from the beach. And then mm -hmm. we'd walk back to our little town and put it into the dump. And although that was in the 1960s and dad wasn't very, no one was very articulate about rubbish in the environment. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he just knew it was a good thing to do, it was the right thing to do. And it was a natural thing to do. So, and I remember finding a book in the library in Catherine in the Northern Territory, and it was called the Hard Times Handbook. And I wasn't in hard times, but it was all about living naturally and simply. And then that started me reading other things and, oh, I think, Grassroots Magazine and mm -hmm. other publications. And I just thought, why have I not seen this? Where, where have, what have I been doing not seeing these things? <laughs> She hasn't learned to stay off of the garden yet. <laughs> so this is our main vegetable producing area and the permaculture concept of having things that you use often really close to the house. Mm -hmm. So we have about eight beds here and um, they're things that you can look at every time you walk past. When you walk past to do the composting or the chickens, you take notice of them. You know when they need watering or when they need picking. Whereas the things that you don't need to look at very often, they'll go further away because it's not so important to notice them every day and how they're growing. We have a couple of oranges here. Um, definitely was... have no problem to grow up in this oh, weather. Look, we, we're on a lot of limestone. So even though we dug holes with um, a crowbar, you know, these are nine years old, I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, wow. So I put this one here. This is the winter orange, the navel. So the northern sun will hit this one when it needs it in the sun uh, in the winter, mm -hmm. whereas the slightly larger orange, that's the summer orange. There's a lot of thinking about placement in mm -hmm. permaculture definitely. and ma mainly the solar aspect, um, which was the, definitely the main thing with our house too. We had to buy a block that was north-south axis and face the living area to the north. So all of that lovely sun goes through the glass, heats the floor, it's a solid floor, um, cement with tiles on top, so that radiates the heat back out at night time. We don't have any air conditioning. We have a, a small wood heater. Um, and that's enough for us. It's enough. We try different things, and if they don't work, that's OK. Um, I had a, quite a few thornless blackberries facing north, and it was just too hot. Everything was burning and crisping up, so I moved them here so they're facing the west. And they're great. We don't get a lot of blackberries. Um, 
but the chickens love to sit underneath in the cool. I have a few friends who do weaving and, and we let the canes grow long so they cut them and then they can make baskets with them. We love our neighbours. We have a gate here into their house and they have about 30 or 40 chickens and ducks and geese and um, love each other. And we, we do watering and, and minding chickens and animals. One thing about permaculture is one of the principles is observe and interact. So you're always looking and observing the weather and the conditions. Um, and I noticed that in the morning, just to the left of the gate, the sun comes through and hits that spot first and it gets the most sun. So I thought I'd put a banana there. What's interesting is that the garden is not made uh, in purpose of uh, uh, the look, but is made in purpose of uh, the plants in it. Yes. So uh, it's designed to be beneficial for the plants. And we always keeping, uh, we're looking at things from our perspective, which is, oh, I want to see the little street over there. Oh, I want to <laughs> see that color over there. But reality is that it's not beneficial for the plants. No, it's and not for us. Mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Wendy, for being with us. Or thank for you very much. Thank me you. with you, <laughs> because that's your house. And see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Sorry, Steve, I didn't catch your surname. It's so. Bowley. Steve Bowley, B-O-W-L-E-Y. Perfect, thank you very much. And you can see, apart my son is running her up on the boat, taking pictures with a really expensive camera, which is scary. <laughs> we are... No, yeah, yeah, okay. We, we are in an oyster shed. So this is the secret spot where the oyster they get worked on, Is that right? That's right. Steve, Name of the company? Pacific Estate Oysters. Lovely. In, in Stansbury. Yep. And it's a family, very much a family business, and we run uh, probably two million Pacific oysters a year, is what we try and put in the water. Oysters, how long time does our oyster take to grow? It takes about three years to grow an oyster to commercial size. It's a huge investment. It is a big investment, yeah. It is. Why did you start this business, this family business, before yeah, you decide a, to change? What did you handle it? Very, there? very good question. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we, we started as a bit of a, a, a retirement project. and We wanted to retire to the country. So we decided to have a crack at aquaculture and we started looking around at various aquaculture uh, businesses. Oysters are incredibly robust. Uh, they don't take much care. You put them in the water and then you just, if you just love them a little bit, they deliver that fantastic package that you've seen. No, we yeah. will gladly and happily talk about oysters and talk about what we do. And as you've experienced today, we mm. will let you taste the oysters. And if you want, you can buy some. If you don't, that's fine too. But we're more than happy to just welcome you to the York Peninsula and show you what we do. Perfect. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Steve. It was a pleasure to be here. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs>
and then Google can mess up our directions. Mm, yeah, like before, yes, exactly. Oh, let's finish this tour for today. Is that the castle? That's amazing, look at that. Look how they move like it will be winds on the sea instead of be a... Well, it was a great day, a bit tired as you can see, today we've been traveling around 300 kilometers from Munta down to the Indus National Park, we've been visiting three uh, local food producers, we've been visiting uh, Lyo uh, from the um, Palais Stack Winery. Then uh, we went down south. Then uh, we went to visit Wendy, Wendy from the Down to Earth Permaculture. My son enjoyed a lot to play with the dog over there and see the garden and hold the chicken. Amazing experience. And uh, and then uh, we went to visit, um, which is Pacific Estate Oyster with uh, um, Steve. And over there we've been learning a little bit more about oysters itself. Three years. Three years for I have one oyster ready to be consumed. How many seconds does it take us to, to eat one? We should keep in mind that fire is cracking outside. I can close my laptop now and it's time to go to sleep. See you tomorrow for the third day of our experience at the York Peninsula. We'll be staying here in the Indus National Park. We'll be visiting around hoping that it's gonna be not too bad weather. Mm -hmm.